Avatar Korra is so powerful that when shot by a massive spirit cannon whose beam travels at something like over a few hundred meters per second, cutting through and vaporizing anything it touches directly like entire mountains and half the city, Korra manages to bend the beam, with the weapon then exploding, taking out everything within an area of a few square kilometers or a couple of miles. But she survives this. By the age of four, Korra could bend three of the four elements, where she was trained in isolation in her home nation of the Southern Water Tribe. With the element of water, Korra can blast people with enough speed and force to overcome that individual's, or sometimes multiple individual's, inertia that keeps them on the ground, lifting them off the ground and sending them flying back dozens of feet or something like 10 meters at a time, making her worse than getting slammed by a full power fire hose. And if Korra was to concentrate her water blast into a smaller stream like a hose, she could easily tear through their clothing, rip off their skin, cause severe soft tissue damage, and break their bones. So it makes sense that with her sheer speed, she can arc water around her body so fast as to not only stop other water and fire attacks, but Korra can redirect flying rock discs that if they move anything like the average thrown ball or hard disc would be moving at something like 50 to 75 miles or 80 to 120 kilometers an hour. Korra has also used the water spout where she creates an absolutely massive spiraling column of water that she can ride, raising these puppies anywhere from 100 feet or 30 meters to more like 350 feet or 100 meters off the ground. She even whips them out in all directions like a miniature tsunami. Tsunamis that Korra is powerful enough to create on her own, pushing apart battleships and devastating opponents, which if anything like real life tsunamis in coastal waters could move at speeds of up to 40 to 60 miles or near 100 kilometers an hour. That would hit you like a fleet of runaway cars bearing down on you, quickly killing you from the blunt force trauma as though being a fluid it operates more like a giant solid hammer. Korra can also instantly freeze any water she uses, encasing her opponents in ice, ragdolling them around, creating deadly pointed weapons like spears, giant ice columns, or massive walls of ice in an instant. In one of her greatest feats, she even uses this ability to stagger and flash freeze an over 25 story super mech that weighs a rough estimate of something like 26 to 31 million pounds or 12 to 14 million kilograms. Korra can also use water to get around really fast, using it to propel herself underwater like an 80 mile or 100 kilometer an hour human torpedo, along with others she's holding on to. She can create a giant air bubble, allowing her and others to walk through and breathe underwater, can casually glide across water like a surfer, turn a wooden paddle boat into an incredible speedboat, utterly fly across snow, and easily tunnel her way through miles or kilometers of ice in the Arctic. And she can also use water to heal burns, bruises, and accelerate the healing of broken bones. Korra also loves to use earth bending, and she's pretty good at it, so much so that she can create ripples through the ground to send people flying several stories high, and 4,000 pound or 1,800 kilogram cars. She can easily make the entire floor bulge, overwhelm opponents with miniature earthquakes that send them and everything within a few hundred feet or 30 meters flying, create massive walls, and easily move aside, let alone fling boulders at 40 miles or 64 kilometers an hour, that could easily weigh around 5,000 pounds or 2,300 kilograms, if not more. Korra also became the first avatar to master metal bending, picking up the art of manipulating metal into any shape she desires in a few days or maybe a week or so. Korra is also an incredible firebender, where at the series start, we see her take on three other firebending opponents at once as she negates and stops one of them from bending before beating them all senseless. Korra's fire attacks are hot enough to cut through and break apart chains. That if made out of steel like common handcuffs means that her plasma cutter fire burns at minimum near 1400 degrees celsius or 2500 degrees fahrenheit which would make her fire blasts almost immediately char and burn the skin and flesh of anyone she hit or otherwise give painful third degree burns, severe nerve damage, dehydration, and heat stress burning away her opponent's airways and lungs, and at the very least light their clothes on fire. But it seems that she dials down her fire bending to blast people back instead, mostly. Korra can also manipulate fire
fire to create daggers, continuous walls of flame, propel objects to go faster, keep herself pinned to a wall in an epic wall run, and at one point even fly. Meaning that in this instance, Korra's fire is keeping all 125 pounds or 50 kilograms of her in the air, exerting something nearing a continuous 600 newtons of upward force, or basically the equivalent force needed to make a compact refrigerator float. And she can breathe fire to instantly heat tea. Korra also eventually masters air, after months upon months of training to downright a full year to even make a single puff, using her powers to further toss around her foes to and fro, and my god, basically vaporize solid rock, meaning that her air shields and blasts have the force necessary to literally blow someone, anyone, apart, stripping them down to their bare bones, and then some. This is just beyond absurd, I tell you. Korra, with a reaction speed that would make Superman notice, reacts fast enough to outpace an explosive device that if like C4 would be traveling near 26 and a half thousand feet or over 8,000 meters a second, creating yet another impenetrable air shield protecting everyone. So it's no surprise that Korra can jump off a moving train with friends in tow, creating a bouncing air bubble. She can suffocate people, make tornadoes, ride Aang's famous air ball, suspend objects in space, and like all airbenders can use air to make herself move way faster for everyday movements, including fly as fast as a car wherever she pleases on her very own glider. With this skill alone, making airbending far more enticing out of all the elements. Beyond her bending, Korra is ridiculously strong for a human being, as she full-on lifts other human beings like a 150 pound or 70 kilogram man into the air with one arm. And then she does the same again, only this time with an even heavier man, who is also strapped to a chair. She also manages to grab onto three kids who collectively weigh around 240 pounds or 100 kilograms, and then they're six foot two or 1.88 meter tall father. She is durable enough to take just as much as she dishes out, which includes getting slammed into rock, ice, previously mentioned energy blasts, and denting solid metal structures. We even see Korra take a full 700 grams, if not more like a thousand, of mercury poisoning, with only 200 milligrams being needed to actually kill someone. Yet she survives, and goes on to have an epic duel in her avatar state that is said to only amplify her existing powers and knowledge by a hundred to thousand fold if the plot demands it, via giving her the power of all the previous avatars. But as powerful as Korra is, she still has her own limitations and weaknesses. Kind of like me being the weird guy who uses science to just ruin fictional stories, Korra is incredibly impulsive, and she often tries to just brute force her way through things, especially at the start of the show. And she is still just as vulnerable to getting stabbed, shot, and manipulated by her opponent which leads her to rely heavily on her friends throughout the show to not only not die, but ultimately win in the end. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Korra was created to be her predecessor's polar opposite in most everything, as she is an incredibly active female that throws herself into learning anything, no matter how long it takes. As we go over Avatar Aang's absurd feats and abilities in this video, see you in the next one.